Hi everyone, it's Georgie here, and for those who don't know me, I'm a senior motion graphics artist specialising in kinetic typography. I do weekly tutorials all about typography within After Effects, so if you don't already subscribe, make sure you hit the subscribe button. In this week's tutorial, I'll be showing you exactly how I created this Groundhog Day post on my Instagram. So let's jump straight in and I'll show you how I created it. Okay, so I'm going to start off by creating the basis of our type animation here. So I'm going to write the word Groundhog Day in the middle here. So I'm going to press Command T to get up my type tool and I'm going to create a box in the middle and type out Groundhog Day. And I'm going to actually keep this font, so it's Rift, but I'm just going to change it to Bold and I'm going to whack up the size so it fits the whole screen. Cool, and then I'm just gonna move my anchor point to the middle and align it vertically and horizontally. So now I've got the basis of where my text should sit. Um, I'm actually going to repeat each letter individually across the screen. Before I lock this layer, because this is almost my template layer, I'm gonna duplicate this layer by pressing Command D. Then I'm gonna lock that bottom layer and then I'm going to edit the contents of this one. So I'm gonna remove everything but the G and I'm going to move the box so it's much thinner and align the G to where the template G is. Uh, and then I'm going to drag the box up and I'm going to repeat the G. So I'm gonna repeat it quite a few times. I'm gonna press Command A to highlight them all and I'm just going to make the space between the line heights a lot more. So, something like that. Okay, so if I zoom out and just pull it out so all the Gs are visible and then I'm just going to realign this so it's in the middle. Cool, so now that I've got the G sorted out, I'm gonna do exactly the same for each of the letters. So I'm just going to duplicate the G uh, move it across slightly and change all the letters to an R and so on and so forth. Okay, so now that we've got all of our letters set up, we can actually unlock the template layer for Groundhog Day, and I'm just gonna turn down the opacity to about 50, so we can sort of see what we're doing. Lock that layer again. Um, now I want to highlight all the letters, and I want to create a position keyframe at the beginning, so um, option P, and I wanna scroll along in my time to about two seconds, and then I wanna drag all of these up until we align in the middle again. So zoom in for this, and line that to the middle and then zoom back out again. So now that we've done that, we actually want to highlight the keyframes from every other layer. So I'm going to go through and do that now. Just holding down shift to make sure that it selects all of the layers. And then right click and go to keyframe assistance and time reverse keyframes. If I was to play that through now, they're going in opposite directions. And then I want to go to four seconds and go through and select the first keyframe from each layer. Uh, press Command C to copy it and Command V to paste it. Okay, and then we're gonna highlight all our keyframes and go to our graph editor. And I'm gonna get the handle and just drag it all the way down and out and do the same for the middle one. And then do the same for the other two handles at the beginning as well. Okay, so I wanna highlight all of the keyframes except for the first one, which is the G, and that happens to be at the bottom of my timeline. And I'm gonna move them all along one keyframe um, at a time. So then I'm gonna deselect the R keyframes and move them along, deselect the O, and then move the rest along, and so on and so forth. And by pressing the position and holding down Command, I am deselecting that whole layer um, of keyframes. So if I press play, it will look something like that. And I can now actually delete this template layer at the bottom. 
and I want to get this to play out um, for the rest of the layer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to move along in the timeline to roughly about there, copying that last keyframe, pasting it, and then going to my stopwatch here and holding down Alt to get up my expression and type in loop, go to the out, and within those um, brackets, hit the quote marks and click cycle. So that will play out for the rest of the layer. And I wanna copy this, so I'm gonna go along in the, my timeline by one frame, highlight that last keyframe, copy it, paste it, and add this expression in, which I'm just gonna copy and paste from here and paste it in. And do that for every layer. Okay, so now that our base animation is complete, we actually wanna highlight all of these layers and put them into their own composition. So I'm gonna press Command A to highlight them all, Command Shift C to get up my pre-compose window and name this Main Text Animation. Okay, so now that we have the main animation, we want to split up this text into horizontal lines. So in order to do that, I'm going to create a solid. So I'm going to right click and go to new solid and your solid settings should come up with the size of the composition. So I'll just hit okay. And then I'm going to go to scale. So I'm going to press the S button to get my scale up and I'm going to unclick this, which is going to constrain the proportions should I change this. And we don't want them to change at equal measurements. So I'm going to unclick that. We only want to change the horizontal height of it and I want to change it to 10%. So it's about that size. And I'm going to go to my align and move it to the top of the composition. And I'm going to duplicate this 10 times. So because we've got 10% of the height, we need 10 of these to create 100% of the height. So I'm going to duplicate it 10 times and I'm going to highlight the bottom ones and move them down and then repeat that until it fills the whole screen. Now you don't have to be exact for these because what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit that bottom one and we're gonna align it to the bottom. Then we're gonna highlight all the rest of them and distribute the layers vertically. And then it will sit exactly in the right space. So now we want to make this a track map of that first layer there. So go to your track map settings and if you don't see them, go to your top of your uh, timeline here and right click and you'll get this column um, appear here. And you want to make sure that you've got modes turned on. And then I'm gonna go to track map and I'm gonna click alpha map. Okay, so then we want to repeat that process for each black solid. So I've duplicated that um, composition and I've moved it down to the solid. And then you just wanna make sure it turns off so that you can actually see the composition. Then to create the kind of slit look to the animation, we, we're gonna move these along in the timeline just slightly. So I'm gonna highlight them all apart from the first one and move them by one keyframe and then deselect the top two and keep doing it. Okay, so if we make our timeline start here, so I'm gonna hit B with the playhead where the first layer begins. And then if you hit play, you start to get this cool line animation in between them. And I actually want to ex exaggerate that. So I think I'm gonna move them by two frames rather than one. So I'm gonna go back through and move them along in the timeline again. So in total it's two, but I'm just doing an additional keyframe here. Yeah, so that's a bit more exaggerated now. Okay, cool. So again, I'm going to pre-compose all of these layers. So highlight them all, press Command Shift C, and let's type slit text animation. Okay, so we can actually delete that first little bit of the layer. So I'm gonna press Alt and open bracket, move it along in the timeline to about here, and then Before they start moving again, let's just finish that off there so it's a nice loop. Okay, so next we want to do the animation where it scales down into the middle and repeats and then twists. So 
I'm gonna start off by creating the first layer of that. So the first one is going to scale from 100%. So I'm going to go press Option S to create a 100% scale frame here. Then I'm gonna go along a little bit of my timeline. I'm gonna go down to say 50%. Let's go make that a second actually. And then I'm gonna to go to three seconds. I'm gonna put another keyframe in, go to four seconds and then add in 100%. And actually, I think I'm going to make this, instead of 50, I'm going to go a bit smaller. So I'm going to make that uh, 30. And as well as those keyframes, I'm going to create uh, keyframes for rotation. So option R to get my rotation keyframe there. Go to two seconds and then I'm going to rotate it by 90 degrees. I'm going to go to three seconds. That's not quite on three seconds. I'm going to move that. Um, and then I'm going to put minus 90. I'm going to go to four seconds and I'm going to put that back to naught. And in order to make this movement nice and smooth, I'm going to highlight the keyframes. Um, I'm actually maybe just going to do this individually. So I'm going to move these and I'm going to give them a nice ease in and ease out for each moment. And I'm going to press the rotation and do the same for those. Cool. So let's see what that looks like. Actually, we want this to scale down, then do all of the different rotations and then scale back up again. So I'm actually gonna move the rotation along like that and move it up. So let's see what that looks like. That's better, yeah. So I'm going to duplicate this layer, go to the scale keyframe in the middle make sure that all the keyframes are aligned. And instead of 30%, I'm gonna move that to, actually I'm gonna highlight both the middle scale keyframes and just change that to 40%. And you can see here that the two layers are interacting. So we just wanna make sure that we have a black solid background. So if I go to my main text animation, I right click solid um, and put that at the bottom of the composition. So now if I go back into the main one, they don't interact with each other. So now I'm going to highlight all these keyframes on the bottom layer and move them along the timeline by two keyframes. So I'm gonna duplicate this layer again and I'm gonna keep adding to these middle scale keyframes by 10% until it hits 100%. Okay, so on this last one, it won't animate on the scale at all. So we're just gonna delete all those and just make sure it says 100%. So now when we play it through, there's actually a gap on either side. So in order to stop this from happening, let's add a few more compositions underneath that are bigger than 100%. So if I duplicate this and I make that 110 and then move these along, two keyframes and again, and I think we'll go up to about 140%. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, cool. So that nicely covers the whole composition now. And I actually want to move all these keyframes along so that there's an even amount of space between the start of the animation and the end. So if I move this along to roughly here, then we've got this amount at the beginning, we've got roughly this amount at the end. Cool. And how you do that the groundhog day post i hope you enjoyed the video if you did please hit the like button and make sure you hit the subscribe button until next week take care